Hello, how are you today? This is Hina from Team Test, and I welcome you in this special discussion of detailed explanation of these five questions, okay? It's a surprise. I thought let's do it in between and it'll be of great help to you. So let's begin with question number one. I will love it. I hope you do too. Well, this question is from Jacobian literature. Famous satirical play, Walpany, is written by, your options are A, Sir Walter Scott, B, Christopher Marlowe, C, Ben Johnson, or D, John Herbert. Obviously, you know it. Walpany is by Ben Johnson. Now, Benjamin or Ben Johnson, as you know, was an English playwright and a poet who lived from 1572 to 1637. Walpany, or The Fox, is his 1606 satirical play. Okay, it is actually a mix of city comedy and a beast fable. The setting of the play is Venice in Italy, and its theme is greed and lust. I have written the major characters' names here, along with the animals that they represent. So I will tell you about these characters, as well as a little summary about this play. Let's begin. Well, first is the protagonist. He's called Walpini, who symbolizes the fox, okay, the Chalak Lomri. Walpani is a rich Venetian gentleman, but he's actually not gentleman in his manners. He is childless and he lives with his servants. One of the most cunning servants is Mosca. Now, both of them fool three people, three characters in the play by saying that Walpani is about to die. He's very ill and he will give your, his entire property to you. Okay, so Mosca tells it to all the three characters. So because of which these three characters start showering gifts, attention, love to Walpani, yeah? But then in the end, what happens is, I'll tell you the end itself, Mosca tries to betray Walpani by saying that Walpani is actually dead and he has made me the heir to his property. So now I am going to inherit his will. I am the rich man. Man, but then Walpini enters and says, I am not dead. Okay, I'll tell you what happens after that. Now, the second, third, and fourth characters are look at the screen Waltor, which means vulture, Corbaccio, which means raven, and Corvino, which is a carrion crow. These three people are equally greedy, okay? Even they want money. But the point is, they are on the other side of the table because they are being fooled by Walpini and Mosca. I told you, you know, the three characters who are being fooled. So they are the ones, Walter, Corbaccio, and Corvino. Okay, so I'll tell you, but in the end, when the court understands what the reality is, it gives its verdict. What are the verdicts? The court tells Walter, the vulture, who's actually a lawyer, to leave the country and he can never practice law again. For Corbaccio, the court says that he should give his entire money, his entire property to his son, Bonario. And for Corvino, the carrion crow, the court decides that divorce your wife, Celia, because you're not worth her and you have troubled her a lot already, right? Now, the next character, I told you, it is Mosca, who represents Fly, and he is a servant, the servant to Walpani, the major conspiracy maker in the play. Now, how is he that, the major conspiracy maker? First, he tells Corbaccio to give his entire property to Walpani, who, when die, will give his entire property to him. So, if you understand in Hindi, Corbaccio told him that you give all your property to Walpani. Walpani will be happy. Then, when he dies, then he will give all your property to Walpani. वो अपनी प्रॉपर्टी भी तुमको दे देगा कोरबाशियो दैट इज व्हाट मॉस्का टेल्स हिम नाउ सेकंड मॉस्का कन्विंसेस कोरवीनो टू मेक हिज ब्यूटीफुल वाइफ सीलिया स्लीप नेक्स्ट टू द डाइंग वॉलपिनी इन रिटर्न ही कंफर्म्स अगेन दैट वॉलपिनी विल गिव हिज एंटायर प्रॉपर्टी टू कोरवीनो ओ गॉड एंड नेक्स्ट वॉलपिनी सर्वेंट मॉस्का ही टेल्स द अदर कैरेक्टर यू नो दिस वन I told you, he tells uh, Corbaccio, Corvino, and Walter also, he tells the same thing, okay? Now, when Walpone tells Mosca that, you know, now I will pretend to be dead. Let's fool these three people a little more. I told you, 
Mosca becomes a traitor and he tells in the court that Walpani is dead. But at that time, Walpani is there disguised as an officer. He comes there and says, I'm not dead. And that is when the court finally understands the entire situation and the court punishes all these bad characters of the play. Let's move on to the next characters. They are Celia and Bonario. Celia, as I told you, is Corvino's wife and Bonario is Corbaccio's son. Now, an important incident in the play is during the time when Celia is left alone with Walpani in that room and Walpani tries to seduce her, it is at that time that Bonario is hiding in that room, okay? Mosca makes Bonario hide in that room and he comes to Celia's rescue. He protects her, okay? Now, look at this, what happens at the end. Celia and Bonario, they were... Told they were told in the court that these people are wrong, Celia and Bonario, and all the others are right, which means Walpani is not pretending, he is dying. All the characters said that, and they said Celia and Bonario are lying. But then at the end of the play, it is Celia and Bonario who are set free by the court, while all the other characters get their verdict. And yeah, I didn't tell you, Mosca is given life imprisonment for his bad deeds, while Walpani is given death sentence. Oopsie. Okay, did you understand? It was a good summary. I hope you got it. This takes us to question number two. In Orientalism, Edward Said examines your options are A, Indian tradition of criticism. B, the tradition of Western criticism. C, the vast tradition of Western construction of the Orient. Or D, Greek tradition of criticism. What is this book Orientalism all about? Do you know it? Yes, you do. Well, the answer is C, the vast tradition of Western construction of the Orient. First, a little bit about Edward Said. He is a foremost figure when it comes to post-colonial studies. Well, he was a Palestinian American professor of literature at Columbia University. And his lifespan was from 1935 to 2005. Before you understand the book Orientalism, you should know what is Orient. This is a term which was given by the West to the countries in the East, the regions in the East. Now, these regions include Asia, India also, North Africa, and the Middle East. These are called Orient by the West. So, Orientalism comes from the word Orient. This book was published in the year 1978. It explores the impact of colonialism and Western perceptions of the countries that have been colonized. Now, what does this book say? Listen to me, I'll tell you a few important points that the book Orientalism say. First, European colonialism was not just a political rule, it was also a worldwide view that the West is superior to the East. Second thing, the academic world, the academics, was also closely connected to the system of political power, okay? Providing the West's domination against the East. And third, Orientalism argues that European colonialism took advantage of colonized people's labors, their resources, and also claimed that the West is the savior of these societies and it is helping them to become more modern and civilized like Europe. Oh God. Now what did Said say? He said that even when the colonial rule ended in the early 20th century, the colonialist thinking did not. So when the United States became a global power, it also supported the Orientalist view of the world. And this view could be seen everywhere, from literature to travel to politics to painting. Tell me something, does Orientalism exist still? If yes, you can comment in the section below. With this, we're done with question number two. Let's move to question number three, Indian literature in English. Shiva trilogy is written by, your options are A, V.S. Naipaul, B, Amish Tripathi, C, Ashok K. Bunker, or D, Shashi Tharoor. Shiva trilogy. You know it, it is option B, Amish, Amish Tripathi. 
Well, trilogy, you know, is three parts. So there are three books of this trilogy. They are The Immortals of Melua, published 2010, The Secret of the Nagas, published 2011, and The Oath of the Vayu Putras, published 2013. Well, I thought I'll tell you a little bit about these books, but before that, Amish Tripathi. Born in the year 1974, he's an Indian author, best known for his Shiva trilogy. The first book, The Immortals of Melua, talks about the land of Melua, which is under attack by the Chandravanshis. A nomad named Shiva, who is called Nilkant, arrives here and helps these Meluans against the enemy. The enemies are Chandravanshis and the cursed Nagas. But during the course of this war, Shiva realizes his choices and he understands his true self. That is what the first book is about. Now let's move to the second book, The Secret of the Nagas. It is Shiva's journey to the far east, to the land of Branga, where he finds a clue to reach the cursed Naga people. Okay. Now after undergoing a long journey, he ultimately reaches the Naga capital of Panchavati, where a surprise awaits him. And in this second novel, he also saves Sati from the Nagas, okay? This takes us to the third book of the trilogy, The Oath of the Vayu Putras. In this book, Shiva discovers what is the true evil, and he declares a holy war against those who are still continuing to practice it, okay? Now, between this battle, Shiva travels to meet and consult with the Vayu Putras, which is a legendary tribe. But when he returns... The battle is over and his wife, Sati, is killed because of which Shiva is enraged and he destroys Melua. But at the end of the book, it is seen that Shiva and his companions, they are being popularized as gods for their bravery and their good deeds. Okay, you got it? Yes, you did. Let's move on to the next question. Quotation marks. Listen. The future of poetry is immense because in poetry, where it is worthy of its high destinies, our race, as time goes on, will find an ever surer and surer stay. This claim for poetry has been made in, your options are A. Arnold's The Study of Poetry, B. Shelley's A Defense of Poetry, C. Sidney's An Apology of Poetry, or D, Iliads on Poetry and Poets. What do you think? Where are these lines taken from? Well, you know the answer. It is option A, Arnold's The Study of Poetry. Matthew Arnold, you all know it. He was an English poet, a cultural critic, and also an inspector of various schools. He lived from 1822 to 1888. He's considered as a sage poet. Who are sage poets? Someone or those poets who instruct the readers on contemporary social issues. And, you know, he's considered the third great Victorian poet after Alfred Tennyson and Robert Browning. Now, we must discuss about this famous essay of his called The Study of Poetry. Here, Arnold has spoken of the high destiny of poetry, okay, in contrast to the instability of science and philosophy. He says that ultimately mankind will discover that they have to turn to poetry to interpret life. So it makes it very important to have a strict judgment and high standard to distinguish best poetry from the worst. Now, what does Arnold say? He says that classic poets like Milton, Shakespeare, Dante and Homer's poetry, their poetry is timeless, moving, it has a superior character of truth and seriousness. So he calls these classic poets as touchstones of literature. Important. Who did Matthew Arnold call touchstones of literature? These classic poets. Okay, you got it? Yes, you did. And now we go on to the last question of the day. The following phrases from Shakespeare have become the titles of famous works identify the correctly matched groups. So these are a few novels, Pale Fire, The Sound and the Fury, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead, this is a play, Under the Greenwood Tree of Cakes and Ale. Who has written them? 
I'll tell you the answer directly. I'm not reading the options here. The answer is C. So Pale Fire is written by Vladimir Nabokov. The Sound and Fury is written by William Faulkner. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. It is written by Tom Stoppard. Under the Greenwood Tree is written by Thomas Hardy. Pile of Cakes and Ale, that is written by Somerset Mom. And we are done. I hope you liked today's video. And as I've told you, Kalyani Ma'am has online courses for Net, Set and Git. We also have online quiz programs. If you are interested to take a look at them, you can contact our office on the number 938783971. This is Hina from Team Test. And now, bye-bye. See you soon again.